In our previous video, we talked about the OSI model, but there's another model that you should be aware of. It's the TCP IP protocol suite. This is often called the IP suite or the IP model. And unlike the OSI model, there are only four layers. So it's a little bit more simplistic to take something that's in the real world and somehow have it fit into this model. Another thing that you should also keep in mind is this particular model was also built around the idea of TCP IP, since that is the primary protocol or suite of protocols that we use to do practically everything these days. This model fits very nicely there. So our four layers here are the link layer, the inner internet layer, the transport layer, and the application layer. Let's look to see exactly how all of these layers work together. Like the OSI model, every time you send information from one system to another, it starts at the top layer, works its way all the way down to the bottom at the physical layer. Information is sent across the network. And on the other side, the process is reversed as information comes off the physical layer and moves all the way back up to the application layer. Well, it's very similar in the TCP IP protocol suite as well. We have the application layer. And then everything moves down to the transport layer, the internet, and the link. And you can see as things are going across the network, if we hit a router somewhere in between, routers work at this internet layer. So all of the information is reconstructed up to that internet layer. But of course, routers really don't care what application happens to be going over them. It doesn't care if you're looking at a web page. It doesn't care if you're looking and transferring email. It has no idea if you're doing a file transfer. It can be anything inside of those packets. Routers only care about looking at things at the internet layer, and then it routes it on its way. When it finally gets to the other side, finally up at the transport layer and application layer is where these two stations are really talking to each other. But below those layers, everything else in between is all the networking and the routing and the switching that takes place to get information from one side of the internet to the other. If we had to fill in some of those layers then, let's look to see what we might put into those particular sections. Here at the link layer, we're dealing with things at the lowest layer of this IP protocol stack. In the OSI model, the lowest layer is the physical layer that deals with signaling. But the TCP IP model doesn't really deal with things at that level. It's really dealing with things from an IP protocol perspective. So at the link layer, we're really talking about protocols like ARP, which is more of a layer two if you wanted to compare this to the OSI model. ARP, or Address Resolution Protocol, of course, is responsible for finding the MAC address of a system. So it will broadcast out that it needs to know the MAC address of a certain machine that has this IP associated with it. And that machine will hopefully respond back with its MAC address. That's the first thing that has to happen every time a system needs to communicate out on the network. So that address resolution protocol makes sense then that we would put it down here at the link layer. The next layer up, the internet layer, probably best correlates to layer three of the OSI model because this is where you would find IPv4. This is where you would find IPv6. This is where some of the other gateway protocols might be uh, might exist. And ICMP is obviously a control protocol, some management functionality. That all happens at that layer three of OSI. It all happens at the internet layer of the TCP IP protocol stack. The next layer up, transport layer, is very much like the transport layer of the OSI model. But here it is the third layer up. And obviously, TCP and UDP are the workhorses of the transport layer when we're talking about the TCP IP protocol series of protocols. The application layer then is everything else. We would have all of our applications loaded just above that. And I just put, gosh, a couple in here, FTP, boot P, SSH, IMAP, Telnet. If it's an application and it's sending data, it goes into the application layer of the TCP IP protocol model. So you can see there are a number of differences between the OSI model and the TCP IP protocol stack. But hopefully, you can also see where the similarities are. And if we're only talking about TCP IP and the functionality of those protocols, then it fits perfectly here. And you can start to see also why the OSI model is used in a much broader sense, because it does refer to the signaling. It does deal with things at a much lower layer. And it breaks things out a little bit more detailed all the way throughout each layer of that model. But if we're only talking about TCP IP, this IP protocol suite is really a nice way to represent the communication all the way from the link layer all the way up to the application layer.